three, four, five. The microphone. I figure they are. We won't bother them then.
Okay, everybody, let me give you a couple of pieces of information before we start our news conference. First of all, the uh, North Carolina State Wolf Pack will be here first. You can see the names of our participants, our student athletes and coach. As a courtesy to our coach and student athletes, we ask that you turn your phones on silent, whether it's on or off, whatever, just put it on silent. We'd also, as a courtesy to our student athletes and to our coaches, if you would please, when you ask your first question, please state your name and your affiliation. I know some of you are local with your teams, but it's still necessary just to keep it that way. After the first question, it's not necessary to state your name again, but at least on the first one, please do. If you would like to ask a question of one of our three student athletes who are up here, it's important because we're doing all the transcribing of the notes and the quotations off-site. So it's important, you can't just say, for all of our students. If you want first Aquila to answer, then that's what you need to say, Aquila, and then so forth, because it's important that our off-site transcribers have the names of the students who are responding. Um, just so you know, the locker room will be open as soon as the coach and the three student athletes leave the locker room and it will remain open for 30 minutes from the time he or she leaves to come to the press box, uh, to the press uh, conference. So once it starts, when the press conference is over, if you choose to follow the team back to their locker room, that's fine, but you must go out the back door. You cannot go out the front door. So you have to go back out the back door to follow the teams around to their locker room. And when the, when the coach gets back, they'll notify you how much time is left for the uh, press, for the locker room to be uh, left open for your talking to other student athletes. Okay, everybody got that? It's not too complicated. Same thing it's been for years. I just want you to be aware of what we're doing. And we'll get notification when they're on their way. And once that happens, we'll get started here. How much? Okay. F approximately five minutes of cooling down time left, and then they'll be on their way. Yes, right. And then we'll allow them to go. And then we're, and we can keep them up to what, 15? should be here momentarily. Did everybody get a copy of the stats? Is anybody did not get a copy of the stats? Okay. We'd like to welcome the 
NC State Wolfpack, Coach Wes Moore, his three student athletes, Chelsea Nelson, Kiara Leslie, and Akila Mays. Coach, your thoughts about tonight's game? Uh, you know, Mississippi State's a great team. Uh, we didn't really have an answer for McCowan, obviously. Uh, 11 for 11 from the field, 15 rebounds. Uh, you know, foul trouble really hurt us with our matchup there, having uh, Akila on the bench quite a bit there. Uh, but again, offensively, uh, they really took us out of what we want to do. And you, know, you got to give them a lot of uh, credit for that. They really uh, apply a lot of pressure and uh, make, it, make it difficult for you to run your stuff and to be comfortable. So um, again, great team, but I uh, couldn't be prouder of my group. And uh, <laughs> you know, all year long, uh, great resiliency and fight and just uh, couldn't be prouder. Thank you. Now, we're going to take questions for our student athletes first, and then we will release them. So any questions that you'd like to ask of our student athlete, put your hand up. We'll get a microphone on the outside left. Brody Miller with the Clarion Ledger. Akila, you know, matching up with Tierra McCowan, I mean, what was kind of the plan going into that matchup, and then how did you maybe make that plan difficult for you? Um, the plan at first was to push her up, um, make her uncomfortable, away from the block so she can't just turn around and um, shoot it. Um, and also keeping her off the offensive boards. Um, the plan did change, um, and we started the second half sitting in front of her and trying to deny her the ball altogether. Um, so that worked out pretty well um, for the most part. Um, but yeah, she had a heck of a game, so congrats to her. Question on the aisle inside. Tyler Griever from WJTV in Jackson. Akiwa, uh, was there anything that stood out or really surprised you just matching up with Tierra that maybe you just didn't see on film or really learned more about when the game started? Um, definitely, I mean, you never really know um, how strong a player is that's 6'7 until you really go against them. Um, so I think that was the biggest surprise that I had coming into the game, um, that her, her strength, you know, she was really strong, so. <laughs> Got a question on the middle left side. Rick Can to the Austin American Statesman. For Kiara, it seemed like your team was scrambling in the last five seconds of so many shot clocks just to get a shot off. What, what made their defense so difficult where you were in that situation the whole game? Um, well, we knew that they were going to deny hard. Um, we've been working on getting open and making sure we're available for our teammates. I mean, they play great defense, so that's what made it a little bit tough. Question on the aisle. On the outside left. Hey, Chelsea, Allie Trost with the Ball Out Media. So, um, sorry, one second. Mississippi State got 44 points in the paint tonight. What challenges did they present that you weren't expecting um, from the offense? For you guys on defense, um, we knew they were uh, they have Tierra McCow in the paint, so we expected them to go in the paint. So um, I think we did a, a pretty okay job at one point, but um, their uh, guards started scoring pretty well, and um, they just had a great night tonight. We have a question on the outside right front row. Mark Kern, Kansas City Star. Chelsea, coach just mentioned about the resiliency all year. Mississippi State got off to a fast start, and you guys came back, took the lead, and then really ended the first half well. What was it going to the half, knowing you were down five, feeling like you're right there in the game? Um, we felt we were really confident. Um, even though we were still kind of scrambling, scrambling a little bit, uh, we uh, got our composure uh, throughout the moments of the game. Uh, it was just we had some mishaps and um, kind of uh, weren't together, but uh, we started to come back together, but um, it was a little bit too late. <laughs> I think Kier really stepped up, though. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Further questions for our student athletes? Okay, ladies, congratulations on a wonderful season. Thank Best you. of luck to you. We'll now take questions for Coach. We'll start on the inside, right on the aisle. Coach Adam Minichino from the Commercial Dispatch in Columbus. Congratulations on a wonderful season. Uh, Tierra is most effective when she can go quick, when she catches and doesn't put the ball on the, on the floor and just goes up to make a move. How, how much did you want to really double team her very, as quickly as possible to limit the, her mobility? I'm sorry, can you repeat it again one more time? 
she likes to go quick and make her yeah. moves. How how much did you, you talk about McCowan? Yes. Uh, how, how much did you want to try to double her quickly to limit her? Yeah, mobility? you know that's the thing. In the first half, we did try to double, and we just didn't do a good job of getting there. I think part of it was we let the ball enter from the top. Whenever we're doubling the post, we have to make the pass come in from the wing, and our post has to really get up on the high side and deny that duck uh, in the paint. And we just didn't get that done well enough. So consequently, when it comes in from the top, it's really hard to double. So uh, I think that was part of it. You know, we tried, we started the game behind, pushing up, hoping we could help in some. Then we tried to double it, didn't really get that done. Started the second half with Aquila in foul trouble. We decided to go ahead and get in front of her. But then you're opening yourself up to offensive rebounds. So, uh, you know, hard to find an answer. She's a great player. And uh, you just don't see that uh, size. And I agree with Akila, her strength, which I, I, I kind of had a feel for it. But uh, maybe on film it didn't uh, come through well enough. But uh, she does a great job of, uh, of using her body in there. Question on the front left. Hugh Keldberger from the Clarion Ledger. Other than Tierra, how do you feel like you did on their other players, especially Vivian's? Do what on their other players? How, how you feel like you defended the rest of them. Yeah, well, you know, Vivian's, obviously, she seems to knock down about every open shot she gets. Uh, uh, and they just got so many weapons. Uh, obviously, Johnson can shoot the three. We did a nice job on her, so I'm proud of that. Schaefer can shoot the three. We took that away. Uh, you know, I thought Morgan, uh, she hit – Hit the one three. She hit a couple of jumpers. We had you got to again. You got to pick your poison. Uh, we knew if we got up and and showed big uh, on pick on the ball with uh, with Morgan uh, that uh, uh, you know we were going to be in trouble with the pick and roll and all that. So we tried to go under picks with her, and uh, consequently she did hit a couple little jump shots at the foul line. But you know she was uh, what was she four for ten. And uh, McCowan was 11 for 11, so you, you try to take McCowan away. You know, it's not, not rocket science there, but uh, uh, you got to give her credit. She did knock down some shots. So, you know, I, I think for the most part we out-rebounded them, um, which is an accomplishment in itself. And, um, you know, we didn't really let anybody else go off, but uh, obviously we didn't have an answer for McGowan. And, you know, the foul trouble was very frustrating. Um, you know, even when we were playing in front of her, we got fouls. So I'm not sure exactly what the answer is there. But uh, again, great player. Got a question on the inside aisle, on the left side. Uh, Michelle Vopel, ESPN.com. Wes, you've played, obviously, in your conference, you have two number one seeds in Notre Dame and, and Louisville, and now having played Mississippi, Mississippi State, another number one seed. Can you kind of just give us an idea of the how those three match up yeah. having faced them. Yeah, I don't know that I want to sit here and compare, uh, you know, the rankings or whatever, but I will say Mississippi State, the way they play is different uh, on a couple of fronts. First of all, their defensive pressure. You know, I was proud of our kids as far as handling the press. I don't think it really hurt us. The half-court pressure is where we struggled. You know, we had some uh, – Shot clock violations. Uh, I was really stressing all, really the last two weeks, because Maryland tries to do similar, really stressing keeping our dribble. Because uh, again, once you pick it up, they're like piranhas in the water with some red meat. I mean, they turn it up. So we needed to keep our dribble. And again, they got, our players got frustrated trying to get open, trying to make an entry pass, try to run their stuff. Uh, so that's what's difficult, is you don't see that as much uh, day to day and then you don't see six seven day, every day either and uh, you know you can do a lot of things but when they're just lobbing it up to her which they do a heck of a job of on inbounds plays on a pick and roll they just chunk it up there and uh, <laughs> there's not a whole lot you can do at, at times you feel pretty helpless but uh, again a lot of weapons great team uh, obviously Louisville and Notre Dame are great teams also so uh, ought to be interesting for the questions for coach on the inside aisle this was a this was a, a big year for you you talked about being picked 10th 
and now making the first uh, Sweet 16 in 10 years. I know you're losing some key kids, but you also have some key kids coming back. Can you just talk about building on what you've done the last two years especially? Yeah, you know, we're proud of the fact. I guess we've gone to the NCAA tournament three out of the last four years, and we've gotten a step further each of those years. And that's what we reminded the team of. It doesn't help the seniors a whole lot, except for you say they played a big part in helping us get there. Uh, you know, this year we had to replace our whole perimeter. I mean, one through four pretty much. And uh, the kids responded, did a great job. Now this year we're losing, you know, our two starting uh, uh, post players, if you want to call them that. And uh, so now we've got to replace that. So it's going to be a big challenge again. You never know year to year how a team's going to respond. But, um, uh, you know, I'm encouraged. I think, uh, you know, we've got some good players already signed coming in. and. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, the ones we had that didn't get to play a ton this year uh, on inside will be able to step up and, and play well. I know Nene Cole had a couple of buckets today and all. So uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we can uh, uh, keep it going, keep the momentum going. Further questions for Coach? Okay, Coach, congratulations on a great uh, season thanks. and best of luck to you. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Appreciate it.
One more reminder to everybody, no live streaming while there, this is going on. You have to completely wait till this is over with. either. Okay, we're now joined by the Mississippi State Bulldogs head coach Vic Schaefer, his three student athletes, Morgan William, Roshonda Johnson, and Tierra McCowan. Coach, your thoughts? Well, first of all, giving God the glory for number 35. That sets another school record for us, uh, 35 and 1. It's uh, this team and these kids continue to set records at Mississippi State and uh, just Proud of them. I thought, uh, you know, hats off to, to NC State. Wes has done a tremendous job with that program. Uh, those kids, uh, we were, they had our attention. They certainly had mine. But I just thought uh, our kids were special today. You know, we were really concerned about uh, uh, Nelson. She's a double-double machine. And uh, to hold her to five points on three rebounds, you ought to have Victoria Vivians in here because not only is she a great offensive player, but she did a great job defensively today. Uh, on her as well. So I thought Mo controlled the entire game. I thought she controlled, dictated tempo. I thought she was really good today. Eight assists, one turnover, two blocks. She made sure I knew that she had two blocks today. And, um, you know, Roe Ro coming in uh, after dealing with what she's had to deal with the last couple of days, played solid for us. And then obviously T, T was dominating as she's been all year 11 out of 11 from the field, 15. Rebounds, 24 points, had four blocks and one steal. So uh, proud of our kids. Um, we'll have our work cut out for us on the winter of this next one. But um, to be where they are to, and to do it the way they've done it, again, I thought our pressure bothered them. I thought it wore them down. You look in the second half, they shoot 28 and a third and 38 and a fourth. And that's typically what happens when we play people. We wear them down. Our press bothers them. Uh, we may not get a steal off the press, but we're just making that point guard work extremely hard. And, uh, you know, for them, um, Ely was two for eight and um, had four turnovers. So we, we tried to do our best to really kind of wear her out a little bit. So proud of our kids, proud of our effort. And, um, you know, it's on to the next one. Okay, we're going to take questions for our student athletes first. We'll start on the inside aisle and then we'll go to the outside. Please again, with the name of the student athlete you want to answer. Ladies, congratulations. Uh, Adam and Aquino from the Commercial Dispatch in Columbus uh, for Tierra. Uh, what is it about this time of the year that seems to uh, bring out the best of you? Because colleague Michelle pointed out 11 for 11 ties, an NCAA record. Um, I can remember last season, you really exploded. You just exploded again tonight. What's, what's it about this time of year? Um, well, this time of year, you lose, you go home, and you basically start over. So, I mean, with my team and my seniors that I got, the four that I got, I'm just trying to make it the best that it can be. I mean, go as far as possible. We got a question on the front row right there in the middle, and then we'll come over on this side, and we'll go back over there. Uh, Sean Roney, Dos Mundos newspaper here in Kansas City for Tierra, Roshanda, and Morgan. Seemed like uh, the, the second half, uh, you were able to eliminate a lot of their second shots and be able to convert on the other end. Just in, in what ways do you feel like you, you stepped up your defensive game the, the second half and, and limited them to one shot on their possessions? Well, keeping them from getting the back doors and just being a help and sitting in help and making sure that my teammates didn't get beat on the back door was a main key for the second half. And then whenever they shot it, I boxed out, made, looked at my girl, made sure she wasn't going in, went and pursued the rebound. Um, I think that we just focused on attacking, on attacking on the defensive end, just like we attacked on the offensive end, and I felt like we let our uh, defense roll over. Yeah, I agree with what they said, but, you know, we just came out second half. We tried to punch first, and it starts on defense first, and then when we take care of defense, it carries on offense. Question on the right-hand side front, then we'll come back over on the left-hand side. Mark Kern, Kansas City Star. This is for Morgan. You guys got up 17 to seven, and they made a little run, take a 20 to 19 lead. What's the experience? And as the point guard, you're the one that kind of calms the team down. What was your mindset when they made their run? Um, game's full of runs. You know, we're gonna make a run. They're gonna make a run. But in the, the day, we need to make a run, and we need to get stops too. So, you know, 
we made stops and we converted, so that's good. This basketball is going to be game runs. Got a question on the front left. Hey, Ro, Robbie Falk from Starville Daily News. What was it like just getting back out there and getting a chance to be with your teammates and um, after what happened and where you were yesterday to get a chance to get it out on the floor and, and play for four quarters? Um, it felt really good. I mean, I knew I had to come back and I had to be here for my team at the same time. And I felt like I left it all on the floor either way, and I felt like we completed the mission. Got a question on the aisle here, and then we'll go across the aisle, and then we'll go to the back. Uh, for, for Morgan, uh, Coach just said that you controlled the game. This is the second uh, consecutive game in which you said that you've done that. Um, is it similar to Tierra with you in, in the sense that, obviously, it's a little different as a senior, but you're really taking your game to another level. How, how much do you feel that it, it's going to another level? Yeah, I feel like I've just been aggressive. It's March. You know, it's do or die. So, you know, I don't want to walk off the court and have any regrets that, you know, I didn't play hard enough, I didn't do this for my teammates, and I didn't execute, and I didn't take care of the ball. So I'm just going out there, giving my all, and see where it takes me. And I've been doing really good for my team and my teammates, so I'm proud of that. Question uh, on the aisle. Michelle Vopel, ESPN.com. Tierra, uh, NC State was saying they were trying to double you more in the first half. They tried to front you more in the second half. I know you've seen every kind of possible defense. Can you just talk about how you've evolved and being able to just take whatever the defense gives you um, or sometimes just take it even when they don't give it to you? Well, I knew I couldn't let them double me, so whenever I felt the double team coming, I had to hurry up and do my turn before they got there and got set in order to double team me. And whenever they double team, I would find my shooters and they were knocking down shots. And if they missed, I would go in and get in the rebound. And when they fronted me, I just sealed her, sealed her off, asked for it with my high hand, and my teammates delivered me the ball in the right hands. And I was just going up. This will be the final question for our student athletes on the aisle. Sierra, uh, Tyler Greer from WJTV in Jackson. NC State was referencing your strength as something that they they might have seen on film, but they really didn't realize it until they got out on the court and dealt with it. I mean, is there a point where you kind of feel like, okay, I can just overpower them on pure strength and get to the basket at will? Well, a lot of teams say that, you know, I wear on them. So at the beginning of the game, I mean, teams are like, oh, you know, giddy and just going. But at the end of the game is when I always get them. So, I mean... <laughs> Either way, it's a lose-lose. <laughs> All right, ladies, congratulations. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll take questions for the coach. <laughs> All right, we're going to start off right here on the front row on the aisle, and then we'll go across to the outside. I'm going to start over here first, and then we'll go to the outside. Hey, Vic, I know you mentioned yesterday that y'all had some heavy hearts about Roe and, and her situation with her grandfather. Just how have y'all, um, I guess, tried to be there for her the last couple of days, and what was it like getting a chance to see her go out there tonight and, and score 12 points and have a pretty good game? Sure. I mean, it's real life. And uh, really got to credit her mom. You know, her mom and I visited. I wanted to make sure that her family knew I was all for whatever they wanted her to do. Um, that that's bigger than, than basketball. And so we, we just wanted to support her. If she wanted to be at the funeral, it, 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 that's where she needed to be. And, uh, but her mom was really good. She said, hey, I've told her, this is real world, real life. Your team needs you. And uh, you can come be at the funeral and then we're gonna get you on an airplane and, and get you to Kansas City. And she came in last night late, film was over, but we had a chance as a staff to hug her and just, let her know how much we care about her. And, you know, that's tough. I mean, grandparents, you know, that was the first person I really lost in my life. And it about yanked my heart out at 15 years of age. So this was someone that was very dear in, to her. And, uh, you know, we wanted to make sure we, we support her in whatever she wanted to do. Question on the outside left. Yeah, Hugh Kellenberger from the Clarion Ledger. Vic, what are the chances that you'd be 35-1 and one and going in the lead eight if Tierra hadn't developed into an All-American this season? Come on, you. <laughs> First of all, great poster in the paper today. Appreciate it. I saw it. that, yeah. Um, you know, T is, again, I said this the other day uh, multiple times, you saw the real value of Tierra McCowan when we lost her in, this, in the tournament championship game. And... Um, She's just, you know, she cleans up a lot of your mess. She cleans up your missed shots. She cleans up your dribble penetration that you give up. 
you know, with block shots, altered shots, turn around and get out of there, you know, things. So, you know, her value to our basketball team is you just can't put a price tag on it. Um, you know, tonight I just, boy, I love to look at her eye tonight. You know, there were some times where she just wasn't going to be denied. And, um, you know, she, she does wear on people. I've heard that many times before. I've heard them say, you know, Coach, we just couldn't move her. And uh, I get, you know, we've worked hard with our guards to give her the ball in places where she needs it. We've, we've missed her a ton this year. And uh, we've got to do a better job. And, and we've worked on that. And uh, Mo and our guard play have done a much better job of that. Question on the outside right front. Mark Kern, Kansas City Star. Coach, you kind of alluded to at Stark Vegas the other day, talked about the basketball and everything going on there, and you expected to see a lot of maroon tonight. What did you think of the overall atmosphere tonight? Oh, just love my crowd, love our people. I mean, they're just the best. Our, our Bulldog fans are the best, I'm just telling you. They, they love this team. They travel. They plan to travel. Um, it's, a, it's fashionable, you know, it's, whether it's vacation or – just what they want to do on the weekend, but they're just the best. And uh, I just can't say enough about them, how much we appreciate them. Uh, I guess they wouldn't let us visit with them after the game because I noticed my team wasn't around to do what they normally do. So, again, maybe we'll talk to the NCAA about that. They're always wanting us to build, you know, our fan base. Well, this is what we've done. So we shouldn't have different rules different times of the year. If we're going to build our fan base, and this is how we did it at Start Vegas at Mississippi State, why should we have to change now at the NCAA tournament? Especially when you got all those people that, by the way, they didn't buy $5 tickets or $10 tickets. You know, they spent money to come here. They're spending money in hotels. They're buying food locally. Um, and they bought a big, pretty expensive ticket to come to the game. So me and you, we'll get that together. We got a question on the outside left. Coach, Allie Trost with the Ball Out Media. Earlier this season, you criticized your team's maturity and mental toughness coming off a 20-point win over Ole Miss, going into a road game at Missouri. And you said that your personal agenda cannot be more important than winning. In what ways during this tournament are you seeing that personal agenda aside and these girls really coming together as a team? Well, first of all, Allie, great job doing your homework. I'm glad to see that. Uh, yeah, I wasn't real happy that day. And uh, obviously, we had some things going on, and I think we've addressed it. Uh, I think our kids have played much better since that day, and we've had much better chemistry. Um, so, you know, in this tournament, uh, like Mo said, I mean, you're, you, know, you can't have, afford to have a bad day. You can't miss a, a hedge on a ball screen. You can't go under on a shooter. Um, you know, you can't miss a block out. Uh, these are all things that, in the, when you, as you move along, are important to victory. And I think our kids are dialed in. They have been all year. And... Uh, you know, as much as I want to worry about them and worry about whether we're ready or not, they have not let me down uh, one time. We got outplayed one night and got beat. That's what's going to happen in our league. So uh, I think they've, they've grown from that day and, uh, and gotten better from it. I'm certainly pleased at our improvement from that day. Good question. One, one more question from her. And having such strong senior leadership on this team, and knowing that any game, any loss is the end of the season for those girls, what motivation, what special motivation does that give your team going forward as they continue this run? Well, it, it, it's, it's good to have four seniors and it's bad to have four seniors because you, you're going to hate to, whenever the last one is, you're going to miss those kids. And these four are unbelievably special. Won so many games. I think they won their 124th game today in their career. I mean, it's just, they've been off the chart. And those types of recruiting classes, you hope come around all the time, but unfortunately, you know, they don't. And uh, so for them, I like where they're at. I like their leadership. I like their focus. Uh, I don't have to get them too dialed in in practice or in film. They get it. So uh, they're, they know their, uh, you know, their days are, are coming down to, uh, to a close at Mississippi State, but I don't think any of them are ready for it to end just yet, and I don't have to remind them. You know, they're, they understand it. Yep, thank you. Coach, I believe that's going to wrap it up for you. Well, <laughs> come on, man. All right, we'll let you ask one more question on the aisle. I got nowhere to go. <laughs> you might be the first coach who encourages someone to keep asking questions. Uh, <laughs>
Anyway, Vic, uh, Tyler Greaver from WJTV in Jackson. I, I couldn't help but notice when you were reading Tierra's stat line, it, it was almost like a nonchalant nature for someone who just went 11 of 11. I mean, do you remember the last time you watched someone do that along with the performance on the glass and the complete game in general? Well, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody go 11 for 11. Now, Tierra went 11 for 12 against Florida her sophomore year. And, um, but to do, you know, do it in an NCAA tournament game, 24 and, and 15. But look, it's old hat. I've said it the other day. If whoever's on the committee, whoever's voting, if she's not a first team All American, then they need to get rid of the Dead Game Award. She's done it against the best competition in the country. And um, all year long, I mean, the, I think that was her 26th double double. It's, it's off the chart. She does it with two and three people hanging on her. Um, and, and let's just forget. Okay, she's getting the rebounds and the points. She's also a great shot blocker. Uh, she alters shots. Like I said, half the time she just stands in the lane and those guards go, eh, I don't think I'm going in there. And they back up. So, I mean, just the impact that kid has in a ball game uh, is incredible. So, um, again, I, uh, her and Tori, if there's two better at their position, let's go play two on two. Because I promise you, those two, they're not losing to anybody. Coach, we're going to give you more time tomorrow, and we'll let you have a little more option to talk. All right. Thank you very much, and congratulations. All right. Praise the Lord, and go dogs.